with the second lecture. Mm, so, <clears throat> uh, here is an announcement that I'm going to put whatever I present on screen as notes, uh, as well as the video clips, both will be available to you all. And best way to share would be to go to my uh, see my website, my web page. Uh, and on my web page, there is a lecture on psychology uh, is a uh, link. You, you can actually go to cmiac.in, then tilde rlk, that is my homepage, and then psychology. In that, uh, there will be notes as well as there will be uh, every day's link to video clip on uh, YouTube will be put up. Okay. So that is the easiest I've figured out what is the way to best share things with you. Notes will be uh, another thing on which uh, uh, another directory it will take you to on which every day's notes will be put up. Okay, the first day's uh, last week's lectures I have already put up. All right. So <clears throat> uh, if anyone has any feedback or anything they would like uh, to convey to me before I start, we can, we can say it so or we'll start. <clears throat> so, last week in the first lecture, uh, we had proven mathematically that while sampling from population of n voters, if we choose a sample randomly of size m, then the probability that the winner in the sample is not the same as the winner in the population becomes small as m increases. Okay? And Especially I have chosen the word randomly with a different color because what we showed was that the number of uh, samples where the deviation is high divided by the total number goes to zero. And we go with the time that uh, if uh, we choose a sample randomly, we will be picking one of those lists with equal probability. And then that what we showed in the last session shows that the probability goes down to zero as M increases. And so we saw that if M is 10,000, then this probability is smaller than 5%, whatever be N. Okay. Now, on one hand, uh, this whatever be N is a very important theme and uh, especially to convey to people <clears throat> who have not uh, either taken a course in probability or who somehow believe that this is all wrong. So. Showing this as a proof is useful. But this estimate is a huge overkill, as I had even mentioned last week, last session when we talked. How can we improve? If our aim is that uh, we want to be uh, not wrong by more than 5%, what is the M we should choose? 10,000 looks too large. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is, let us take a case where the well, the winner has 53% votes, while the loser has 47% votes. Uh, suppose the population is, this is 10 million, okay? So, we are looking at a case where there are two Candidates, 43% support for one, 47% for the other. We don't know who is the winner, but we only know that the gap is this much. Now, what we are going to do is trying to see how will we get to this point where we showed that the, <clears throat> uh, if we go by, go with the winner rule, namely you draw a sample, whoever is winner in the sample, you declare that person to be the winner. What are the probabilities that you will be wrong? That's what we are looking for. Okay. So, <clears throat> how do we do that? Well, we can do it in many ways. Okay. Uh, for example, uh, he is on the call. He is on a call. Okay, so we can do it in many ways. For example, we can do use a uh, Python code to compute uh, if out of uh, this large number of uh, total population, if uh, 
you take a sample of size, all possible lists of a certain size, how many there are, and you divide, etc. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> you take the proportion of favorable cases divided by the proportion of uh, uh, divided by the number of favorable cases divided by the total number, you will get the, the proportion where you are right. So, um, what I've done is I've run a code and you can see that, that if I take 1501 as opposed to uh, 10,000, even if you take just 1501 as the sample, uh, as the sample size, so like, then if the gap between winner and loser is same as earlier, 6%, then the accuracy is over 99%. means probability that your rule will be correct is over 99% and that it will be wrong is less than 1%. So you don't need to go up to 10,000, but only up to 1501. Now, uh, I have used this in lectures. I have used it in some discussions, meetings, and people who don't believe it simply say, oh, this is some mathematical theorem. What has it got to do with reality? Or we don't know whether you are giving us the correct numbers. Okay. I have had all kinds of things say. And just as a matter of fun, uh, you can check how long it will take on Python to do the coding. I just clicked run it again and it did it. Okay. So it's a few seconds less. And deliberately, I had not uh, printed out what is the total number of cases and what is the favorable number of cases? That also can be done. And just to give you an idea, uh, you can't read anything, nor can I actually. But uh, the so this is this is to illustrate that this is no theorem being used. There is no limitation limit. There is nothing, no approximation being done. This is actually exact counting. Just like uh, when we had uh, hundred out of hundred, we did two rounds, three rounds. Uh, uh, three draws, etc. We could count exactly what is the favorable cases and uh, non, uh, total number of cases exactly. That one can do. And just for your information, I will be putting up this Python code also on uh, the same uh, uh, website that I have linked to. Or you, you can reach that just by my uh, CMI uh, website and my homepage. Okay. And how did I get hold of this number 1501? So when actually you can experiment and uh, one can run it for, uh, so for example, I'd first run it in multiples of 100, then zeroed it down to where it is to 100, uh, to 10, and then finally something between 1401 and 1501. And we finally get that actually 1501 is where you cross 99%. Uh, now, this, as you can see, is for the population size where I had pointed out uh, 10 million. Okay. Now, mm. what happens if I just change the population size? Okay. Uh, if I change population size to a billion, multiplied it by 100, it will take a little bit of time, but as you will see, not that much more. Okay. And <clears throat> accuracy has not remained same. Accuracy has come down. So as I had explained that when you are doing sampling without replacement, uh, the lower the sample, you are slightly better off. And uh, as in, uh, total number increases, it ap approximately goes towards what would be the estimated probability in sampling with replacement. And earlier I used to compute only using central limit theorem and so on, and it would be sampling with replacement. And it was only when some people attacked me saying you are making unreasonable assumptions that I came up with the scheme of doing uh, Python code and showing exact numbers. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, so much to uh, give, uh, so much to uh, uh, explain that one, the <clears throat> sample size required to achieve a certain level of accuracy, whichever way you define accuracy, uh, the major component to that comes from sample size and not from sampling proportion. Sampling proportion is sample as a percentage of the total population. Okay. Um, and <clears throat> I don't say anymore, it doesn't affect at all, but it affects minimally okay? because we are always doing sampling uh, 
uh, without replacement. So <clears throat> now, as a mathematical statement, probabilistic statement, this looks great, but uh, imagine what how this would play out in the following scenario. Uh, and this has happened. Let's say we are having a contract with a media agency and uh, we have just done some nationwide poll uh, and uh, got reasonable results, etc. Some money was approved, etc. Okay. Now, next time we are doing, let's say, Tamil Nadu. And Tamil Nadu, the population size as well as the uh, uh, registered voters in Tamil Nadu is about 6% that of India. So the commercial people in that channel uh, say, well, what is there to discuss? You've done all India at so, at so many thousand rupees. We'll just give you 6% of that and now you do it for Tamil Nadu. After all, Tamil Nadu is 6% of the total population. And we have to tell them that, look, uh, if you want same level of accuracy, effectively we not need the same sample size in Tamil Nadu. That nobody will ever give, but we can make some adjustments for that. But uh, it won't be 6% of the India. And even if they agree, they are convinced that, you know, we are playing a fast one on them. They don't quite buy this mathematical and probabilistic proofs, etc., etc. But uh, this has happened. And uh, we have give and take and eventually we agree with something. Uh, if just sample proportions, it doesn't work, uh, make a difference. But when it is all India versus a state, uh, there is a state is certainly the, the way voters behave in a state is certainly more homogeneous than how voters across the country will behave. So uh, when we will be coming to that. So uh, in the overall modeling, we can incorporate it and basically achieve accuracy at the same level with a lower sample size. But what we said till now was about uh, sample in one constituency uh, to get who is the winner. Okay. Uh, now, I suppose you all are well aware that in India, let's say, or in any state in India, the eventual winner who becomes the chief minister or at the state or home, uh, prime, uh, prime minister at the center, uh, it is not based on direct voting, right? Nobody votes for whether they want uh, Modi to be the PM or not, or whether last last year people did not vote whether they wanted uh, Stalin to be the CM in Tamil Nadu. They vote for candidates who are belonging to parties. And then based on that, uh, the uh, prime minister or chief minister gets selected. So you have to factor all that in when we are doing opinion polls. Okay, and we will, we will be doing that across uh, our sessions. Some beginning we may make today and we'll continue on that. But before we go that, uh, I have a important uh, point to make here. Namely, the my calculations which I tried, which I showed you and proven, etc. that if you Sample size uh, is all that matters. Population doesn't matter. As I had put in red, all that is depending on the word random there. So if you have chosen the pop sample by random uh, sample scheme and uh, the then and only then uh, this calculation is correct. Otherwise, it can be off the mark. So I tell, I put it like this, that the statistical guarantee that the sample proportion and the true proportion or the winner in the sample and winner in the population of target population do not differ much is all based on assumption that you have drawn the sample randomly. So most of the time you will be right. Not always, but most of the time. If you don't do it randomly, do by some other scheme, then all bets are off. Then you have to examine how you have chosen your sample and then start again. Okay. So the this is something which is often forgotten uh, by people and uh, they again argue with me many things. Uh, some This will also answer some of the questions put up in the end yeah, last session, but I'll come to that in a minute. But the um, begin with, 
people don't quite understand what do we mean by randomness and what do we mean by random sample. Even people who have studied probability and statistics may have only a very vague idea, but certainly beyond that, no, they don't. And uh, the best example I have, I use this in all my uh, lectures, this example, that most people think that random or random choice is synonymous with arbitrary choice. Okay. So, uh, if I were to choose a sample of 100 in Tamil Nadu or in Chennai, people would argue, just go and talk to the students in the hostel. Now, right now, they are, they are not in the student, but we are talking of a time when people were actually living in the hostel. Somebody could argue, just go and meet all the students and ask their opinion. That's a random sample of size 100 in Tamil Nadu. I said, no, that's not a random sample. They'll say, why not? This is a sample, this is a sample of, or this is a subset of 100. You are choosing one subset out of all possible subsets of 100. And this is one such. It would have happened. So why is this not random? So the point is whether something is random or not, that has to be decided not by the chosen set, by examining the chosen set, but it has to be examined by the method by which you chose. So randomness is the property of the process of selection and not of the selected sample. Okay. And uh, unless you go through a system where uh, you can actually justify that it is a random choice, uh, it doesn't work. Okay. Now, uh, random choice, one I have explained already that what it means is uh, people, uh, one way of doing it is you have a all possible names and out of that you draw one at one at a one at a time randomly and so on and so forth now today you have different possibilities if you have a list let's say we had a list of all uh, voters in india okay 20 years ago such lists were not possible today with a little work it will be possible what you can get is a list of uh, voters in each uh, uh, each constituency or each polling booth. Also, perhaps you can get list of voters in a in one constituency. All voters you can get, perhaps. But they are PDF files and not quite uh, readable. But you can have now other software which can make sense of those PDF files. You can read those names and uh, all available information. Put them all together, and you can, in principle generate a list of uh, all voters in India. Okay. Now, once we have that, well, uh, as I mentioned, there were some 91 crore voters in the uh, 91 uh, crore registered voters under the election commission list. We can run a software, any of the softwares, Python, C++, R, you name it, and draw a random sample of the required size. We want 20,000 nationwide. We want 50,000 nationwide. We can run a code which will run 50,000 names out of this all. And not just names and whatever other characteristics, their address, their whatever is available in the book, uh, in the voters list, it can be done. But it is of no good. Okay. It won't be of uh, any uh, use because the cost of uh, here comes now all uh, other issues. Namely, firstly, the cost uh, proportion will the cost will be fairly high per person. This way of doing it, uh, because you may you may have to send somebody to one city of all, and then in that there may be only one person to be interviewed. Okay, so uh, and then the person the reviewer has to or the, our person will have to move to another city. So the the cost also comes into the picture. But more than the cost, there is another very interesting aspect which comes in. Uh, the to make the best use of a sample, random sample may not always be the one doing you the best job. You have, if you incorporate all other information about the sample that you have, you can actually improve. And there's a classic example for this. Uh, 
I believe it used to be used by Professor D. Basu, uh, who didn't quite teach me, but uh, he taught several of my friends from ISI, one of whom is present here in the lecture, Srinivas Bhogle. They, they taught him, uh, and I don't know whether he used this example in his teaching to them, but he has used this in lectures. And the example is very interesting. Let's say, uh, these days, circus, uh, we don't ever see much, or there are very few out of business now. But when we were school kids, or when we were even students studying in ISI, uh, going back 40 years, circus was still a viable uh, uh, option or, or business. And there were, uh, there were circus troops, which will go to a city, run the circus for some years, some months, and then move on. So the example is that a circus is moving from city A to city B, and they have a large contingent and they are doing multiple ways. And at some place, they have to cross a river and there is no uh, bridge there and they have to use uh, a boat. And they have animals, large number of animals. So somebody tells them, there are, uh, how, uh, what kind of boat you will need? You, you estimate the, uh, the total vote of your troop. Uh, you, individuals is easier, but for the animals, you estimate the total votes, a total, not votes, a total, a total weight of all the animals by simply uh, taking uh, a random sample of the animals. Okay. And they take their uh, weight and that will give you an estimate of the, uh, of the weight of the, the entire troop. And as you can guess, this will be a disastrous method to decide what kind of boat you would need. Because the, the, the circus probably has two elephants and uh, maybe a three lions, but they may have large number of all kinds of other animals. Okay. And uh, if in your sample, somehow you have chosen, it has higher proportion of uh, uh, the uh, <clears throat> elephants or uh, lions, your estimate will be much higher and you will order a very high size boat with way above what is needed and you will spend a lot of money. Whereas somehow if your sample is somewhere which doesn't have any of these weighty characters such as lions and elephants, your estimate will be way lower. You'll buy a boat, you'll order a boat and then the whole troop will sink. So uh, this will be a disastrous way. And Obviously, the person who is going to spend the money, the manager or the owner of the circus, of course, knows that the weight depends on the size of the animal. So it would be disastrous to uh, forget this and go and do, uh, say, no, no, I am a statistics believer. I'll just do random sample and do it. So randomness is not the beginning and the end of it all. You have to take into account all the available information you may have and use it to uh, get the best uh, thing what you can do. Okay, uh, so the <clears throat> when it comes to voting, Let's debate what all are the additional information one may have. So, so I already told you in any exercise, we need to know uh, what is the data we are going, I mean, what is the total population that we are looking, talking about. So in India, the population is not the entire uh, uh, population of the country, but only those who are uh, eligible to vote. And even that, those who have not chosen to ensure that their name is on the list don't count now. At the, before the election, just at the time of election. So the relevant number is the uh, list of registered voters available with the election commission, number one. So that is our population. When we say population, it is not all uh, human beings living in India, but those who are registered and eligible to vote. Okay. All right. Now, <clears throat> what all information do we know about them? One individually and one, uh, the, on the other hand, uh, about the entire uh, population of the uh, together, individual and total. So individual election commission basically lists the age, the address, the gender. 
and nothing else. It doesn't register uh, what is your religion. You may impute a religion based on the name, but the list doesn't quite attach a religion. Okay. And then it doesn't attach the caste. Okay. It doesn't have your economic status, rich, poor. It doesn't have literacy status. So all this data is not there on the list. We have to remember that, number one. Now, on the other hand, if you look at, if you talk to, and, or uh, if you have thought about it, if you have read about it, or have seen television meetings and discussions talking about voting and polling and so on and so forth, uh, you would have heard that, or, or you would believe that the voting intentions of individuals do depend on many factors. Uh, age, because there will be a lot of fuss being made about lots of uh, young uh, voters, how will they vote? Uh, religion, for reasons I don't need to discuss why, but uh, obviously it has an impact on voting behavior. Uh, caste, there is so much debate on the caste in all TV channels that uh, I too believe that it does impact the voting intentions, but perhaps not as much as the all the experts uh, talk about it on air as if you know what percentage of a certain caste people have voted and you know who is going to win. That is how they talk. I don't believe it is that straightforward because uh, it influences, but it doesn't decide. But uh, to a large proportion of people, it may be having a huge impact. So gender, okay, uh, men and women, may have different preferences. They may have different likes, dislikes. And uh, that may override uh, the voting intention coming out of religion, caste, economic status, uh, and uh, age. Okay. Uh, so there are all these factors definitely do have an impact on voting. Okay. Now, so ideally, as a statistician, somebody could say that, well, you get me uh, uh, a sample where you have, uh, you know, uh, done what is called stratified sampling. Okay. So, to those uh, who do not know what stratified sampling is, it is something like this. Uh, let's say nationwide, you have uh, election, uh, you don't have to rely on election commission, but you have uh, census data about proportion of uh, men and women. So, about gender, you have a good idea. We can assume that among the voters and actually election commission list also had gender on it. So you can get out of that the uh, uh, gender and probably 54% may be men and 46% may be women. So the stratified sampling says that if you have decided by whatever means to get a sample of size 100,000, huge sample, but 100,000, 54% of that should be men and 46% should be women. Namely, you divide the entire population into strata of by gender, men and women, and uh, you get proportionate sampling. Okay. So this is what is called stratified sampling. And uh, that kind of ensures that whatever difference of uh, uh, that may be attributable to gender will be taken care of because you have gone equally in the two groups. Okay. Uh, so this is in what is called stratified sampling. For the circus example that I talked about, the strata would have been the either the type of animal or the animal high weight, mid weight, low weight, or whatever way you can classify. And uh, that would be a, a strata there. So here, theoretically, one could say that Okay, gender we could do. Uh, now we want also economic status or literacy status or religion or uh, caste. Now all these uh, attributes, we do not have uh, classifying each individual. We do not have which of these classes they belong. So it will be a dream and only a dream. You can't do uh, uh, random sampling via these stratas. Not possible. Okay. So, 
I guess I may have talked about this a little last session, but uh, let me go back to where I began doing this. Okay. 1997, I was approached by uh, Yogendra Yadav, who was professor at CSDS, who approached me that he wants, uh, they want a statistical validation or statistical help in them doing the sampling and estimates and uh, pr uh, predictions correctly. And I readily agreed, at which point I was a truly a theoretician, had never done any work with real data. So I talked at various, to various people as to you know, what exactly they do. And uh, I was, uh, when I learned what is done by most sampling uh, agencies or most channels or uh, most of the, so at that time there were, uh, ORG Marg was one entity, there was AC Nielsen was another entity, and there were some other entities which were known to be doing sampling and uh, for sampling related to elections. And CSDS was one of them, which had engaged me. And talking, I figured out that uh, while CSDS has tried to do uh, what uh, statistical theory would like them to do, namely randomized sampling with stratas and so on, other agencies don't do that because for all these other entities, uh, ORG, Marg, which merged and eventually they were merged with AC Nielsen and all that, those stories I don't need to get into, but all these agencies, uh, election time they do sample survey for voting, but at other times they are doing uh, uh, marketing sampling, marketing data collection, Colgate or Pepsodan or Coke or Pepsi or you name it. Okay. And uh, there, uh, the if they are proven to be wrong, nobody would even know. Elections, at least, you if you make it, you make a wrong prediction, it will be known that your prediction was wrong. In all these other examples, you never you just go by what the marketing agency says. You don't ever know whether they are right or wrong. Anyway, but what they do, and last session towards the end, I talked about this, but I forgot the word. So what they do is quota sampling. A word uh, or a phrase which we never learned at ISI or is never taught at ISI, what is quota sampling and how is it done? But uh, that is what marketing agencies do. And quota sampling is something like this. Uh, I guess one of you did mention it in the end as a question answer session, but uh, how if you just go and do sampling today at uh, uh, malls or, uh, or, or uh, shopping markets, sh shopping marks, okay, marks. Because there are large number of people available at one go, and at one go you can uh, quickly uh, you can move from one to the other, and quickly you can do you can uh, talk to fifty people here in time it will take for my randomized sampling to go door to door. Uh, the total time taken maybe one one hour maybe or more, and here in one hour you can do twenty to thirty at least. Right, so much faster way of doing sampling. So what do they do? They do as quota sampling is that we are, I, I had listed about eight or 10 attributes which are relevant for our uh, election prediction. Okay. Uh, starting with gender, age, uh, religion, caste, uh, economic status, uh, literacy, and so on and so forth. And uh, through census data or some other method, you may have a population profile. What percentage in population is literate? The way, whatever way you define literate, okay. What percentage of them is rich, poor, rich, uh, middle class, upper class, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you have proportions for population uh, target population. You require that each of these you treat as strata. So what equal proportion for each of these uh, strata in the sample? So if a target sample is thousand, you want. Uh, 540 to be male and uh, 460 to be women if it is 5446. And likewise, you build up for each of this and you give a target that you get a sample of size so much and on each of these attributes, so much percentage should come. That is what is quota sampling. And there's no reason, uh, no, no, no wonder that in ISI we were never taught that and we never teach that in a sampling course because uh, even if you get that, there is no statistical guarantee that this you will be resulting, the result is going to be a representative sample and all the calculations which I did last session and early part of this session, I illustrated via Python, 
they don't come into the picture at all. It won't work. Just won't work. So, for example, you can go to big cities in the country and go to shopping malls and do this sampling. And you can, by looking at people, you can decide who is rich, who is poor, who is less, who is uh, who can, uh, who is educated and who is less educated, so on and so forth. And you can try to balance this uh, matrix of uh, uh, ten attributes and pick in thousand people. But you are not gone to villages, uh, and uh, those who are illiterate will be underrepresented in some way or the other. Amongst them, somewhat richer may be coming. Uh, so all kinds of this will come into the picture when you are going to this uh, quota sampling method. So let me also add that there are people who have today, uh, there are people who have made uh, software and uh, because my name is there, people take look at my name whenever they are trying to see who are the people who are doing who are involved with sampling and so on, people have come to approach me that, oh, we have come up with a fantastic uh, uh, new software to pick your sample. I said, okay, what does it do? Oh, you feed in the population uh, uh, characteristics and you, uh, you start off, each time you complete a sample, you uh, feed in uh, what, are, what are the attributes. So rich or poor, uh, male or female, age, and whatever of these attributes you fill in. And then uh, initially it will do randomly, it will recommend to you what is the next sample you should look for. And when you go halfway through, it is seeing where you are overrepresentative, where you are underrepresentative. And therefore it will tell you that now your next person should be a poor woman uh, who is literate and blah, 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 age this much and so on and so forth. And people are making money selling the software doing an uh, undertaking which is meaningless according to at least statisticians, including me. Anyway. So, proper sampling is a must. As I explained, total random sampling across the country is no good. And reasons I will explain in a minute. Uh, but at the same time, we cannot do stratified sampling of the kind that others may want, namely, do strata on all these variables, which we all, which most experts agree are, have an influence on election, but about which we don't quite have data on individuals. How do we still do stratified sampling on such a scheme? So we, so the answer is, you can do stratified sampling only on attributes for which you have information or data on individuals. Beyond that, you cannot do. You can hope for the best only. Otherwise, as a, since election was not my primary uh, job or primary way of living, I could simply, after talking to CSDS and exploring what they do and what needs to be done, blah, 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 I could have exited saying, I'll advise you, but don't get me involved. Whereas the more I heard it, I really loved it and I enjoyed it and I, said that, okay, these are the guys who are doing it the way I would recommend, so I want to do work with them, okay? So what is this strata? Okay, so again, for circus, I explained that the uh, uh, or a, a dog or a, a whatever tiny uh, animal they may be carrying, uh, a, 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 a cat, uh, that has an impact on the estimation of total votes. What are, and I listed some which people believe have impact, but we don't have data. So can we come up with some thing on which we have data and about which we believe that there will be impact? So gender is one obvious one and gender we can account for. But there is one huge one. And here comes in what I would say domain knowledge or domain information or interaction with uh, ex domain experts at least one of these three becomes must. And that is, apart from what is available in the election commission list, one important attribute which has an impact on voting intentions is 
uh, either the city or more than the city, the state from where the person is uh, going to be voting. Now, of course, people can move. Uh, like I live for years in Delhi and now last 10 years I am in Chennai, but at last 10 years I am in Chennai, right? In between I was in Bangalore, but it was also for four years. It is not that every month I am shifting my ad, uh, address. There may be some who may be shifting, but there will be few. So largely speaking, we can assume uh, that the, 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 the address or the state from where you are uh, registered as a voter uh, most people are being uh, are from that state, fine, or have been there for long enough. Now, we do believe experts do believe that state has an impact on uh, election uh, 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 outcomes or uh, intention of individuals in voting, and that is because each state has a different political history. After all, people who would like to vote for people who are likely to win. If a party has no impact in that state and you like that party, you meaning a voter likes that party, the person will know that voting for that party's candidate has no impact, no li not likely to win. So amongst those who in the opinion of the voter have a possible possibility to win, they will choose a voter amongst them. Okay. And uh, there is ample evidence of this. Again, uh, I'll explain what I mean by evidence about this, but uh, let's say uh, we go to, uh, uh, not village, but two constituencies, uh, one on the Tamil Nadu side and another on Andhra side or uh, uh, the, the Karnataka side. Okay. So, one from Tamil Nadu and one from either Karnataka or Andhra and proximity, close proximity, they are sharing the border. Okay. We could also turn it around and have this example as uh, Bengal and uh, uh, Bihar or uh, Bengal and uh, Orissa. And one can see that if the, as you go from one constituency to the other, the socio-economic profiles may be very similar. Okay, Very similar. Not always, but in most cases, very similar. Even if their language is different, but they will be, they will be able to understand each other and they would have a dialect which is closer to the other side and so on and so forth. Okay? So, on socio-economic matters or, or, or variables, there will be a good uh, match in these two in, uh, in constituencies. But if you look at the history, how they voted, you will see there will be violent difference. So for example, uh, Tamil Nadu, the state parties call the road short. Okay? Even, if, even if the election is the central election, uh, the, the, the uh, the ruling party in the state, which is uh, which last uh, umpteen years, umpteen decades now, several decades, has been a regional party, uh, and who are, they dictate who is going to get the votes. They so who they ally with, etc. May decide. Even if the national party wins the thing, it is at the mercy of the uh, state party. Whereas you go to Karnataka, which is not the case. Okay. The two major parties in Karnataka, two out of the three major parties in the Karnataka, in Karnataka state for last three decades have been national parties. Okay. Uh, the third party would also like to consider itself a national party, but effectively they are uh, only uh, important in Tamil Nadu, in, in, in Karnataka. So two out of the three parties, which are the top three last several decades are national parties and that is in, in Tamil Nadu, they are way down. So uh, it has to do with history, how the state parties versus the national parties have behaved in the state, uh, how their national policies have impacted the state, and so on and so forth. So one can keep debating the reasons why this happened, and you can go there. Uh, in uh, Bengal, uh, uh, Bengal and uh, uh, Odisha or Bengal and Bihar, 
where borders where when now it has changed last 10 years or maybe 12 years but earlier for for large uh, maybe 300 uh, sorry 30 uh, years uh, bengal was dominated by the left front and uh, that was never the case in uh, orissa and in bengal they did have a uh, say but not much nowhere near what they had in bengal so this is to say that the reason one can go on and on but the <clears throat> state has an important role in deciding how the people voters in that area are going to eventually vote totally okay so it would make sense just like the circus example to treat the states as a strata and uh, whatever is my percentage of I mentioned earlier that you know, Andhra is uh, sorry, Tamil Nadu is six percent of the national, roughly. So whatever is my sample size nationally, six percent of that should be Tamil Nadu, because we are not voting, we are not deciding uh, who, which of the candidates will win the support. Even if uh, surveys conduct conducted have, who would you like to be the PM? But that has neither here nor there. Because the people may support a certain PM candidate, but unless uh, that party or that alliance candidate carries votes in the state, it is of no good, right? So, what matters is who wins in the state, even if it is for Lok Sabha election. And uh, candidates will matter, and they in turn, uh, what parties are there, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, we must have a proportionate sample in each state. So this is one concrete strata we have found. Within that, we can further add the gender. And uh, the, in the election commission list, another thing which may have an influence is age, which can be factored in. In all my uh, exercises in over two decades uh, with the CSDS, uh, uh, the, the age has not been taken into account, but the gender we did try to take into account while doing sampling, and the state certainly was taken in the uh, in, in context and uh, as a strata. Okay, so as I explained, the random sampling. Uh, but with appropriate controls such as the strata being chosen which is feasible and which is important okay so all the auxiliary variables about which you can draw some information and you have information at the individual level and at the population level you can factor it in but after that you must do randomization so in my debates and discussions with various people uh, they said, huh, I no wonder you are saying randomization or random sample. You are, after all, a theoretician. In practice, we never do it or is never done. Okay. Uh, so it's never done because they don't have the, they don't know that that is how it should be done or they don't have the funds to do it. This, any one of the two may be possible. I'm not saying that everybody who works with the other agencies doesn't know what needs to be done. But then they may not have the money to do it. As I as came out in the discussion already, the random sampling of the type that I'm talking about, after doing various strata controls and so on and so forth, eventually we have to draw random numbers and pick people and go door to door. And that will have much higher cost than uh, going to uh, market agencies or uh, market going to uh, malls or uh, shopping cadder, ca ca shopping areas and picking people on that based on uh, the quota sampling. Or another method which is very popular in the West, especially in the West, and increasingly being resorted to India based on what I get to know from the people who do uh, these things, is uh, uh, you, you do uh, randomized calling people. So you have a list of OP, uh, you phone numbers, you have a, a group of 20 people sitting in a room, 
you have given them this list either printed or now on computer or whatever way and tell them pick a number at random call that if nobody picks up pick another number okay so this is random uh, picking random phone numbers and then calling uh 20 years ago i dismissed it totally saying that ha huh, what's what, small very small proportion of people have uh, uh, phones with them so this is useless don't do that now people have argued with me over time that yeah what you said in uh, uh, 1998 99 2000 was fine but now aren't you don't you see the newspapers don't you see how the tele density has gone up so what is tele density a proportion of uh, a phone uh, <clears throat> uh given by companies or allotted by companies uh to total population tele densities okay so that has gone up significantly over a period of time 20 years ago it may have been maybe 2% 5% i don't know the data i don't have the data less than 5% for sure more likely less than 2 now it has not just today i think maybe even 7 years ago it had crossed 75% or 80% tele density but remember the very crude definition of tele density doesn't translate that 80% of people or 75% of people actually have accessible by phone and if you do phone uh, pick people randomly by phone you are at least reaching 75% of the population and certainly it is not equal across all the strata that we would like to do first of all uh perhaps it i may say for everybody who is attending this meeting okay you go and an analyze uh, number of people in your family and total number of telephone numbers in your family landline uh, 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 mobiles and uh, it for internet connectivity if other thing is not giving you another connection you have drawn that that also counts as number so total number of so called phone numbers available in the family and divided by uh, the popular uh, the size of the family and i guess for most of us the number is going to be more than one for most of us but this being more than one means what we all our we are contributing to the tele density computation that means the true proportion of people who have phones is less than Uh, the total tele as shown in tele density. Then we can go on and on. We can say the uh, people living in uh, even the poorer people have phones. But yeah, but poorer people who are living in the cities because it is useful for them to do work. Right? The maids coming in our house fifteen years ago may not have had phones, but today all maids in uh, who are doing door to door house to house work uh, in uh, big cities they will have a phone number. they may not have a smartphone but they will have a, a phone which will have a number but the same may not apply to uh, a villages so what i'm trying to say is that if you do sampling using this random calling method we should know that our data is going to be tilted poorer uh, uh, rural uh, less educated uh older people are going to be less represented on our sample and as far as voting is concerned all everybody has a equal say and not only that uh but can go back and check data i have seen data for years that the percentage of people who vote is higher in rural area than urban area urban area either people don't care they have other things to do or election is in summer and they say ha ah, who is going to go and stand up uh, stand in a uh, hot sun when i can be in a relaxed uh, this thing in the ac environment at home so in 2004 i was engaged with the uh, aaj tak channel and uh, the last phase of poll was also the day it polled in delhi and somehow they were taking time to arrange a car for me to go back home and i was in a hurry to go so i just walked out and went to the street and took a auto to go home the auto driver was talking to me he was in a talkative mood and 
I'll try, put, say it in English, but I'll extract exactly what he said to me. Uh, he doesn't know that I have any election work or anything. All he sees is me looking uh, reasonable uh, clothing, reasonable educated, perhaps taking a, so I'm not a, from a poor uh, person from the village because I'm sitting in a auto which was going to already cost 75 rupees, that is 15 years ago. So he can have his own connections. And he tells me that, sir, your BJP is losing in Delhi. Vajpayee was the prime minister and BJP had won the previous election in Delhi. Okay. So he's telling me your BJP is losing in Delhi. So I was amused. I asked him, how do you know? He says, from morning, nobody is uh, hiring me. So I have just on my own going around the city on my own just to see what is happening. So I said, okay, what did you observe? So he said, people like you who vote for BJP are all sitting at home in their air-conditioned environment. And people like me are all standing to give, go and give votes in Delhi. He says, I myself would have gone and vote for BJP. So this is not what I want, but this is what I think is going to happen, talking to, seeing who is voting. Okay. So in other words, even in urban areas, the richer more educated, richer, well-to-do people are less in going to vote. So coming that, putting all that together, okay, uh, all these other shortcut methods of polling, uh, collecting polls uh, data, have their shortcomings. And people try to apply corrections, this and that. Ideally, one should not have to apply corrections. One, one should do this with a, in a way that uh, we can and uh, it was good that uh, I got engaged to do this thing with uh, CSDS and they had a clout and record and uh, fortunately at least not always but significant time they had the backing of a channel to uh, uh, actually do a poll in the formal correct way. Okay. So I guess time is up and we have anyway next week so We'll resume from here next week. Uh, uh, some questions I can take. Very little uh, uh, time left, but we can still extend a little and do questions. Those sir. who would like to leave can leave. And anyway, sir. yeah. Sir, so uh, for the people who go and stand in the queues, has anyone tried to absorb the CCTV footage of the people standing in the election queue and try to wait. predict their class? No, no, wait, 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 wait. What are you saying? CCTV footage of what? Of the people who are standing for the election, the queue. Queue? Yeah. Uh, no, I don't think they do that. By looking at that, they don't make any judgment, at least as far as I know. Okay. They can do that, but as yes. far as I know, I have not heard anyone do that. Okay. The auto driver was saying the same thing. So no, no, was... auto driver was telling me. He was not engaged by any agency to do it, right? Yeah. So uh, perhaps people can, uh, but you see, the unless you do it randomly, you only knowing about it in Delhi doesn't count much for the national okay. poll, right? Uh, so one more thing: Are these commercial polls agencies? Are they actually interested in accurately predicting the poll, or do they just want some money? What do they want? Uh, so, firstly, they don't. They definitely all of them are in it for business, so they all want money. Okay, okay. number one. But uh, see. They have to do a fine uh, this thing. So they have to do a job which will be which is ca they are capable of and for which they are getting money, okay, and uh, do the best they can. And uh, some of them try to do that. Some of them can be manipulated. Some of them can be threatened. All kinds of things may happen, okay. So difficult to get an overall thing as to what happens globally. But uh, I don't know how many of you track things, but I think about. What was it? How many? Six, seven years ago, or maybe some. There was a, a sting operation, okay. And uh, one entity had gone and uh, was trying to engage a polling agency to do polling, and they wanted them to tweak the output, okay. And CSDS was the only agency which said no, we won't do it. Others uh, tried to engage with them, did not commit what they will do. But uh, saying that you do this thing for me and what you say, you have to present it in a way I want. And they were debating 
as to how they would do it. Okay. Several agencies were caught on this. Uh, several people in those agencies were fired. If the owner himself or herself was caught, nothing happened. But if poor employees were caught, they were fired by the companies. So uh, what happens in reality, one can keep debating, but various things happen. Sir, like in the national scale, you said that the state-wise classification was important in a national scale election. So in a state scale election, are the district-wise classifications equally important? Not at the same. It is important, but not to the same level as it is nationwide. Okay. Okay, sir. Yeah. So in, in, when you come to a state, what happens is that uh, if it's a huge state like, like UP, okay, now, you can divide it into groups. And as you can say, the people say South, uh, East UP, West UP, this UP, that UP. Okay. So, this classic, so district per se may not be that important, but this classification in larger uh, groups in which uh, uh, augmented, I mean, uh, uh, things which are closer to each other are clubbed together. And again, it has to do with where there are more farmers, where there is a one kind of uh, population, one, where, where the main attribute. Various such factors are there. What is the attribute which is dominant there? So, uh, UP, Maharashtra. In Bengal, it is proximity to Calcutta and distance from Calcutta. So, in most of the states, it is geographic, but uh, uh, I mean, uh, geological, uh, geographic, but in Bengal, it, uh, we had done uh, classification with the proximity with Calcutta. So when the caste voice and religion were distribution, they will also vary with the district. So doesn't once it make again, it, once again, which one? The caste voice distribution of people and the religion distribution, they vary uh -huh. a lot with the districts. So yeah. So does so, it make an so you see we have to do a uh, you know this is as I said, is the art and science of polling and predictions. So you can do as much as you can, but you try to do too much fine tuning into that, then you may be entering errors. Okay. So uh, district, yes, but uh, uh, region, as I call it, each state is divided into several regions. So region more important than district per se. Also, unfortunately, the district and constituencies don't match. So typically in a Lok Sabha poll, uh, one constituency may have some part from one district, some from another district. And each district, some part can be in one constituency, some can be in another. Because district is static across time. It can be bifurcated, but rarely will they merge districts because it is an administrative matter. Whereas, really speaking, they have to uh, redo these uh, constituencies every 10 years. They don't do it for other reasons. You can read about it or we can talk about it next uh, lecture, but that is not static. It is supposed to change over time. Okay. Uh, sir, quick question. Is rejection sampling at all something you which you would recommend? Which sampling? Rejection sampling. So rejection. you instead of, instead of 1500, you take 3000. And then eliminate from you. Then will get the clumps of what you would ideally like stratified. And then you eliminate those from those stratified sampling. No, because uh, you see, this is you are uh, you are also talk. Your aim is to catch voting intention, which itself is uh, dynamic. It is not static. If you were vote, if you were doing weights of individuals even salaries of individuals, economic status of individuals, what you said may be done because it's, we are trying to wear something which is static at least for significant length of time. But voting intentions, we would like to do as close as possible. No, no, as no I process. understand. What I'm talking about is once you interview someone, you can get all the variables that you said might affect like caste, this, that. Yeah, but so you cannot pick based on that. Sorry. Even if you no, learn, no, I I collect three thousand uh, instead of fifteen hundred, and then 
that is never recommended in any sampling scheme that is never recommended to reject to delete samples that you have already taken you can give different weights to those but you don't never ignore data which you have already collected never oh, i don't okay. know of any uh, because in uh, getting in theoretical thing uh, computers it's often a thing for getting a normal distribution you reject everything that's outside the normal and then do something no 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 we will talk about it later that rejection sampling i know what you are talking about but that is you don't even collect the data there okay i understand anyway okay it's not done it's not done i'll no, take no, over no, no. no i know what you are saying von neumann's rejection sampling method for sampling but that is not uh, the true sampling no okay you have collected the data you never discard it okay it's uh, collecting the data uh, like uh, getting the real uh, opinion of the people nowadays getting difficult like right? because they don't want to share that uh, well i don't they... see any that any reason for it is now more difficult than before okay uh, i don't think that there was any trend of this kind in what people may be willing to it a lot depends also on how it is asked so for example if you directly ask Uh, whom will you vote for if the election is tomorrow or whom did you vote for if, if this morning or today a uh, large proportion of people are not going to give you an answer or if they give they may be uh, picking up a arbitrary answer and giving you none of the leading candidates whatever okay so that is a big pain okay so there are two things which are done one thing which is done by some agencies is you don't ask whom you voted for you ask some other questions who you think is going to dictate your vote so did you think that this state government was good did you think the central government was good was this policy good uh, whether now like the with all the thing which happened about the uh, kisan andolan and so on should government have done it at all was it wrong was it wrong to take it back all such questions are asked okay and based on the answers you say whether or not you voted for x or y that is what is done by some okay but uh, i don't buy that because uh, that always assume, that is assuming lots of other things there i don't like that so uh, <clears throat> other ways you have to approach not this way okay uh, like also getting sentiment from the uh, like social media sites uh, yeah, that, so various people are doing it i am yet to be convinced of that somebody has i am willing to debate with people and them not theoretically but actually show that they did this and that is how it helped uh, but uh, in the, this social media in uh, in, in uh, is something which applies to if you are only looking at the voting in big cities maybe it can be used but beyond that everywhere if you apply that same factors i don't think it will work yeah good people are doing it no doubt okay but this is like astrologer you know if astrologer says that uh, look last time i had predicted this correctly so you have to believe me and i am going to that i am going to predict it again right you know the fallacy in that because the large number of astrologers each one would have predicted something differently half of them would have got it correct right so uh, you have to really look at uh, the reasoning or the method or all that and also track record going across time not just one shot sir yeah and has anyone tried to use machine learning for predicting elections instead of the statistics i uh, you see that is a fashion okay i am not ruling it out but I, again i need to be convinced that what are you going to do with machine learning here that is going to give you an advantage over what i did maybe you can do the same but you have to convince me that you can do better sir maybe uh, for doing machine learning we need to get more data that will be also more challenged yeah so uh, based on what is available how can you use machine learning if you say no i will get 
that much more sample then fine welcome go ahead and do it if you can that's how i will reply yeah right so there is no single tool which is best everywhere okay even in statistics in when we are taught sampling uh, we are taught several schemes and you are taught this is better than this this is better than this this is better than this we were never told that you know uh, we could then ask them why are you teaching us total random sampling because it is not better than anything else everything else seems to be better than that so it has to be mapped to what data is available or maybe come available to you based on what is uh, uh, money or whatever else all that you will decide what sampling scheme has to be used there is nothing which is better so i am not saying that sample uh, machine learning is no good or is always good no it would depend on the context what where you are applying and just because it is the fashion therefore i will use machine learning is not the right way to do it you have to explain why it will work here better okay so maybe we'll stop it's already 13 minutes past the one hour time and uh, quite a few people have had to leave they have left all right but uh, feel free to share questions if you have with me earlier before the session next time i mean i don't say that i will answer everything in the session i can answer in as a reply as a text reply call or some of them i can pick up at the beginning in the next session okay and as i mentioned on my website i have a link to uh, uh where i am link putting together uh, the uh, today's session i will uh, uh, get the link and then create a uh, uh, mp4 file which i will upload to youtube and at least by tomorrow i would have given the link on the on my uh, home page uh, or the where already the link for the last one is already put up there and uh, i plan to do that all the sessions okay all right